Hey everyone, thank you for your ongoing support and encouragement of me doing videos like this, going through upcoming LEGO sets that have been revealed in pictures, but haven't been actually you know, revealed to the world, haven't been actually put up for sale as yet. The one that, the theme that you all have been asking me to cover most has been LEGO Speed Champions. So let's go through the ones that have been announced for 2020 so far, starting with this one, one of the first, if not the first to be announced for 2020, the LEGO Speed Champions. Watch this. Formula E Panasonic Jaguar or Jaguar Racing Gen 2 Car and Jaguar or Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy. Well, if that's not a handful, I don't, or a mouthful, I don't know what it is. A handful. Blew. I hope I'm not required to say that. I hope none of us are required to say that for legal compliance with Lego's naming rules or anything. Anyway, uh, so this is a Formula E car. Formula E is a you know, electric racing car series that started out looking pretty wonky and pretty destined to fail, but has turned around quite a bit and has actually grown quite rapidly and is doing pretty well these days. And this is a pretty good representation of a Formula E car. And it's, you know, it's a specific one. I like what they did for the Halo device there. And then this other thing is a crossover SUV, which a lot of people like to make fun of. I personally... Uh, just in general, people like to make fun of crossover SUVs. I, I, I'm not entirely against them. I feel like not everything needs to be a crossover SUV, but I, I personally owned uh, now a couple of the second version of what was the first modern crossover SUV, the Nissan Murano, and I find it or found it to be quite a nice vehicle and quite a nice shape and style and, and design for for practicality it's basically just a car only taller it's like a, a wagon you know a station wagon anyway uh this is the all electric in real life all electric all electric jaguar crossover suv called the i-pace and the interesting thing here is that both of these cars are eight studs wide and you're going to see all the cars in this video are eight studs wide i think it works great over here just the proportions are looking very nice um Open wheel cars that they've done previously uh, have been practically eight studs wide, if not eight studs wide as it was. I think this is a little bit more now with the extensions out here, but just for the proportions, it, it has worked out. So I don't think there are any issues or any controversies over this being eight studs wide. And I personally don't find anything wrong with this being eight studs wide either because it's supposed to be larger, you know, larger than the sports cars that they've done before. So I think it totally makes sense. I like this shape right here. I like these. I think this is good. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this. Now, the interesting thing, well, another interesting thing here is that with the increase in size, they've increased the number of parts and they've also increased the prices. Let's just have to see how that works out. Uh, this is just another picture of the same thing, but the individual cars are gonna be going for 20 bucks each compared to 15 before. Here's the second twofer, which also comes with a fast car and another fast car that happens to be a crossover SUV. Probably a little bit more controversial this one is. So here we go. Here we go. Let's do this. Lego Speed Champions Lamborghini. Is it Urus or Urus? I'm going to say Urus. Sorry. If, if that's not right, it, too bad. I'm going to say Urus. STX and Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo Evo. Or is it Evo? That's the official name of the set. Now let's first talk about this thing right here, the Huracan. Now I like the Huracan myself very much. Uh, I like it better than the Gallardo before it. I think that it is a proper Lamborghini in every well, in every way. Yeah, it's a Volkswagen, but <laughs> for all intents and purposes, I think it's a good Lamborghini. I think this is a good model of it. Now here is a car that previously would have been depicted without question in a six stud wide format. It's now being depicted in a eight stud wide format. And I think this looks much better than the six wide format for something that's supposed to be short in height and wide, super wide. Uh, yeah, there's a picture from the back. This is so there's, you know, there's the real thing. There's the actual car that this is based off. And yeah, it's, it's a, low wide proper sports car almost supercar you know just uh continuing that 
that beautiful line of of cars continuous continuously since the Countach, and you know obviously it can be traced back to the Miura, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's supposed to be you know super wide and and adding the extra two studs of width plus a little bit you know it's it's more than eight studs but it's it's just two studs more than the previous designs i think has worked out fantastically well here this might not look that great from the side uh but i think it's a pretty good effort and that looks beautiful to me so i'm again happy so far and then the other car here is an eight stud wide plus a lot mm. I don't know about that. This this crossover thing, which is all, which is actually a monster of a vehicle. It, it's easy to to look at this and say, Lamborghini, you have sold out. You are now terrible. You are not a a you're not Lamborghini anymore at all. Like this is this is bad. It was bad enough when you became Audi, effectively. You know, you became a Volkswagen. But now this a crossover? No. But this is a monster of a vehicle. This is a heck of a vehicle it is a lamborghini it really 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 is and and don't forget the the rambo lambo never forget that that was a proper lamborghini as well and this is a much more capable vehicle than that at least in terms of performance but just talking about the lego version hmm ah uh, hmm it's it's rather boxy isn't it they tried to minimize the number of studs on the sides here with a lot of studs on the side construction regardless and it just looks all gridded up and boxy and flat to me. Now that that sticker right there needs to be shoved forward and brought down. That'll help a lot with making this more continuous along the side. But what I like about this least by far is how far out these wheels come. Why did they do that? I don't like it at all. I'm sure there are reasons for it in terms of how this was built inside. And you know, once I get one of these, I'm, I'm sure I'll find that out. But I don't care. I am looking at this and I don't like how far these wheels stick out in the tires. They should not stick out that far, period, paragraph, end of story. They should be tucked under the wheel wells. So I'm not happy about that personally, but the Huracan is a thing of beauty. Look at that. Yeah, that looks really, really nice. I think I'm going to get two of this set and build one without the stickers just to keep without the stickers. I'll probably build this without the stickers and then try to modify this to pull the wheels in. It'll probably be harder than I expect. No, it won't because I'm already expecting it to be hard. So <laughs> takes care of that problem. But uh, yeah, uh, another thing, notice the new windscreen here. This is a printed piece and it's beautiful. I love it. This will be useful for so many custom things. I want to make some some custom vehicles now for my Melanby districts, you know, cyberpunk type stuff. Absolutely. And this is also a six stud wide uh, Speed Champions. It kind of looks like the previous four stud one, wide one, but it's six studs wide for this windscreen here as well. This windshield piece. I believe that is going to be a sticker, not a print. I believe. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it looks much better up close. I wonder how much, I wonder how accurate that is right there. They try to make it look like the exact same texture uh, all, all around. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that works out. But yeah, just another closer view of that. This this is obviously a computer rendering. It's not a photograph. Maybe it'll actually look better in person when we see the, the plastic texture. But I, I want to like it, but I can't because of those wheels. The 1985 Audi Sport Quattro S1 is a legend of rally, and I never would have expected them to do this, but thank you, Audi, for investing in this from a marketing perspective you know they're trying to to keep their their legend alive as their their vehicles kind of start to to um, they've, they've been they've been melding for quite a long time into just standardness you know <laughs> there hasn't been all that much that has differentiated them but they're, they're trying to keep their their motorsports heritage alive and remind us that yeah this is Audi. This was Audi. This is Audi. And I I love that they have made this vehicle in in an official Lego form. That is a printed piece right there for the Hooter bonnet. It does look a little bit a little bit boxy. This is a very geometric vehicle. Uh, there's just a picture. I like what they did for the rally. Lights up front. Big old air dam splitter front spoiler thing. <laughs> it's like a, a shovel or a dozer blade. That's pretty respectable yeah the only thing that i don't like here is the roof that's the only thing that i don't like here everything else looks like it's done 
pretty respectably well. Did good a good job with the the wing. This um, this wheel well extension here, the flare for the fenders is perfect. Yeah, that's very nicely done. See, that's that's tucking them. That's putting the tires in the proper place. And the coloring of the wheels and everything, that's very nice. What they did here for the, the indicators, very nice. Yeah, glad they did this. That's great. I just don't like the the roof myself. This is a little bit squarish, but I don't think I could do any better. Definitely don't think I could do better. So I'm, I'm not going to complain about it, but this, yeah, just leaves a little bit to be desired. Okay, the Ferrari F8 Tributo. Hmm. This is a very cool looking car as a toy, as a model, I think, as a Lego thing. And the more I look at this, the more interesting its construction is to me. Like notice these uh, five-sided uh, tile pieces with stickers on top. I think those two stickers need to be brought in together. I think that'll, or does there need to be a little line there? I don't, I'm about to, about to see when we look at the picture of the real thing. Um, Yes, that sticker need, definitely needs to be brought down a bit. But I mean, this is a another printed canopy piece, same one that was used on the Lamborghini. Um, yeah, just some really interesting building techniques and a really cool looking thing. This is just a a different image that's out there, lower resolution, but shows you the corners of the box. But let's look at the car. Okay, here's 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 the back. Yeah, so there there is no little little red gap in there, so those stickers down below would need to be pulled together. Uh, this is nice. It's smooth in good ways. I like that shaping there. Yeah, a lot of this is is really nice, but I do have I do have problems with this. I like it a lot. Okay, I'm, and I'm not going to change on that. I'm not going to not going to waver from that position. I like the look of this quite a bit. I think I have another angle of this. Yeah, that's a pretty good angle. Uh, it's cut off at the corners. Sorry about that, but it's it's a pretty good angle. My problem with this is that it looks way more like a Vector W8 than a Ferrari F8. There's a Vector W8. Uh, this is an image that I flipped horizontally, so that's why everything looks backwards here. It's just to have it, you know, to be able to, to do that. I guess this looks a little bit more rounded to me. Uh, it kind of looks like, uh, what is that? A Russian supercar, I think, that looks a little bit more like this. But from this angle, and especially just here, all this stuff here, just it's so much that. So I see this when I look at this, but I should be seeing this. This is just much more sculpted. And I know we're dealing with Lego here, and how much sculpting can I ask for in something this small? Yeah, it's eight studs wide, but still, it's super difficult and you can see just how much effort went into designing this and how many tricks were used to bring in strange positions of things at strange angles and stuff so there's a ton of work that went into, went into this but still it just doesn't look that much like the source material to me it doesn't look enough like it like these cars in general uh going back to the uh what did what did this one start with was it the 488 i feel like there was one before that 458, yeah, was kind of where this this started. They've all had that unique shape. The eyes have had that distinctive shape. And what Lego tried to do to capture that is basically just right here, you know, trying to frame the front a little bit, but you have no curvature here. You have the curvature here, and then just that one sticker that tries to, to close it all up. And it's it's not enough for me. This is just too distinctive right here, and I, I just don't see it. Still really like the model though. The last one is the Nissan GTR Nismo. This is the R35, obviously, modern one. And finally, finally, a Japanese car is represented in LEGO Speed Champions. This is the first Japanese car to be represented in LEGO Speed Champions, which is shocking given just how much Japan has contributed to automobilia, and especially fast automobilia throughout history, throughout the history thereof, um, especially modern history. And this is the first one, and it comes down mostly to licensing more than anything. I know that uh, Toyota in particular was not licensing th anything out 
for quite some time. It was kind of frustrating to makers of models and such, or at least they were being very difficult about it anyway. This to me looks pretty proper. Now, there are a lot of stickers used here. Gosh, there are a lot of stickers because it's a race car, you know, so it, it, it kind of needs the, the graphic treatment is trying to be something in particular. All this, once again, is a, a print. It'll all be a single printed piece. And this is this is some interesting stuff down in here. And this is interesting with the, the angle with the hinge piece behind there. Again, some really nice sculpting work from the Lego designer. And this looks very, very much like the source material to me personally. I think this is very nicely done. There's the car just by itself. It looks even better now. The front end is, is really, really key for this one. It's, it's one of the distinguishing factors of its entire design is its nose. And I feel like they pretty darn well nailed it here. Now, getting back to the eight stud wide thing. This is the first one where I can't make any excuses for it. I can't say, well, you know, it's supposed to be an open wheel car and it needs the proportions. Oh, well, it's supposed to be a super wide, you know, supercar kind of kind of thing. And, you know, it needs those proportions. The GTR is a very plain design of car overall and a very normal sized car. It's very large, actually, in real life relative to other supercars and and sport cars even it it's rather large it's not it's not like bmw at le mans you know it's not it's not that big but it's kind of it's kind of big it it's it's kind of big relative to others i've sat in a couple of these things i've, I've been around them a, a good deal I've seen them on the road and yeah they're just they're very shockingly normal in size and fit and finish and feel to to sit in it doesn't feel like you're having to become a transformer to get into one so this should be this should have normal proportions and basically what they've done here is established that these are the new normal proportions for speed champions and the proportions are good it's just a way bigger car than the ones that they've done through 2019 and that means that speed champions really is is evolve it has evolved now to the point where previous ones won't look right at all most of the previous ones simply will not look right like maybe if you put a senna up against uh, next to this the proportions will be kind of kind of right because the senna is, is a much smaller vehicle but hmm yeah it just it just changes everything and you compare this you compare an eight stud width and this is a genuine eight stud width you know it barely barely uh, pinches in on the sides and yeah the the greenhouse area is is only six studs wide but you know most of this is eight studs and then it just has a little extra fender extensions and uh i don't know it's just it's just bigger we went from four studs wide to four studs wide with fender extensions flares to six studs for uh, for speed champions across the board which is already looking pretty big on lego street base plates to now eight and this is just huge pretty cool looking car oh, it actually looks almost more like a you know, just in here how this rounds off it almost looks more like a, a 370 to me <laughs> just right in there and then you get more of a 488 style of uh, uh with the, the, t the tail lights there but this is, this is pretty proper the one thing that i don't like about this model is how small the wheels are wheels and tires especially the wheels particularly the wheels relative to the rest of the thing because they should be much bigger they need to be much bigger they need to be like all up in there especially for the racing version really needs to fill up those those wheel wells which should be cut up much higher so that is off in my opinion otherwise it looks like a gtr now the floodgates have been opened they have made their first japanese car they need to do a lot more japanese cars stat immediately because come on, how can you not? How can you not? They can go back and do at least a couple other cars from the history of this one. You know, you can do like a... Uh, do the do the 2000, what was it, 2000 GTR? So, uh, I hope I'm not getting that getting that wrong. I'm going to look it up in another... Because I'm, I'm, I'm mixing, I think, a couple, two, a couple things together. 2000 GTR got that right the Skyline 2000 GTR they need to do that and like a R34 I feel like the R34 is the quintessential 
uh, Skyline GTR, but they could do an R R32 as well. They need to do some Supras and not just the modern BMW thing and the old, wasn't it a 2000 GT <laughs> also? I feel like they're, yeah, 2000 GT, you know, the, the kind of uh, progenitor of, of the, the Supra. They need to not just do those two as kind of a, a modern and old dual pack. They need to go through and at least do the Mark II. I personally had two Mark IIs previously. They were awesome. I had a Mark III that was the smoothest driving car I've ever been in. Uh, I've, I've been in a Mark IV as well. They should do a full series of Supras. They should do a classic or uh, uh, facelifted NSX. I don't care if they do the new NSX or not. They need to do the original one. They need to do an RX-7 FD at the very least. Everybody's going to say, yeah, you should do a Trueno AE86, man. Hachiroku, come on. Go, go. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. But I also would like to see some other Corollas, personally, like any of the, the hatchback uh, style ones or the, the uh, notchback GTS uh, that, that was available in the U.S. Like there, there are just so many Japanese cars. Are really, they, should, <laughs> they should do a Mitsuoka. Ah, so few people are going to get that. Props to those who do. That that's a joke, kind of, kind of. But yeah, they need to do more and more. They need to do some Evos. They could do an entire line of Ev of Evos. They could do a, like a Galant GTR uh, uh, VR4, excuse me. They could do an Evo. I guess like a or instead of that, do a, an Evo two. It need to do a five at least, or five and a half, or was it four and a half or five? I think it's a five and a half. Five. I'm just gonna say five. A Machinen edition, five. A seven. Don't have to do an eight. I had an eight, but I think seven's a little bit more iconic. And a ten. So many cars need to be done. And Subaru. Hello. So popular these days. They could have a lot of fun with that. As long as they do a 22B, as well. That's a, that's a requirement. If they're gonna touch the Subaru world, they need to do one of those. And I wouldn't mind if they did a nice old FX. <laughs> And uh, an SVX, for that, for that matter. Anyway, I'm geeking out about car stuff. Uh, these were the Speed Champions cars that have been announced so far. That looks so much like a, a Vector W8. So much. But cool, nonetheless. I don't have any major problems with any of these, except for like the, the wheel extension or tire extension right here. I'll try to fix that on my second version. And the smallness of the tires and wheels, especially for the GTR. The new size, I think it looks good. Eight studs wide. I wanted to hate it. I don't hate it. I just hate the fact that these cars are going to take up an entire side of a street. Like, you won't be able to park cars. You won't be able to park any cars that have the new Speed Champions cars. In, uh, you, know, uh, you won't be able to park any cars on streets that have the new S Speed Champions cars on them. And you won't be able to display the new Speed Champions cars next to the old ones in most cases without making one of them look really awkward. But sometimes change is important, and I think in this case it's a good change. It's just going to take some getting used to, and not everybody's going to be able to make the adjustment, and I am 100% understanding of that. That's my look at these. Thank you for watching. Sorry if I went too much off on, on tangents, but I enjoy this stuff. I will talk to you again soon.